So let's um, start the roll call, please. Yes, ma'am. Uh, give me one second. Let me get that started. Bear with me. All right, uh, Commissioner Jim Anderson. Here. Commissioner Roger Anderson. I'm here. Commissioner Ryan Coonerty. Not present. Commissioner Justin Cummings. Here. Commissioner Francisco Estrada. Not present. Commissioner Zach Friend. Here. Commissioner Rochelle Lather. Here. Alternate Commissioner Ed Banks. Here. Alternate Commissioner Yvette Brooks. Here. Alternate Commissioner John Hunt. Here. And alternate Commissioner Mono Koenig, not present. Uh, Madam Chair, since Francisco Strada is not here, Yvette Brooks will be our voting member for the city. Great. And we do have a quorum. Okay, so let's move on to the executive officer's message. Thank you, Madam. Uh, I'll keep this brief. It's just a quick reminder to the commissioners and members of the public that we are conducting this meeting uh, via Zoom webinar in accordance with Assembly Bill 361. Under this platform, commissioners and staff will have uh, complete uh, access to their webcams and microphones. Uh, for the general public, their microphones and webcams have been disabled, uh, but they can still view and hear the entire meeting. Uh, they also have an opportunity to address the commission on any agenda item by uh, two methods. One, they could send their comments to LAFCO staff via email and we'll read their comments on their behalf or they can raise their hands uh, on the Zoom platform by clicking on the raise hand button. For anyone joining the meeting via conference call, they can press star nine and they'll raise their hand. Uh, and for any agenda items that require commission action, there will be a roll call vote. So that's the quick overview of the virtual meeting process. I got two more quick updates. One is the request for proposal regarding the fire study that the commission approved. Uh, the deadline to submit bids was uh, late April, but we did receive a couple of comments from cons uh, consulting firms asking for uh, more time to submit their bids. So that's why staff extended the deadline to May 18th. Uh, that way we'll get more bids to consider uh, identifying the most, uh, uh, not appropriate, but uh, the best qualified consulting firm. So that date, uh, that deadline has been extended to May 18th. And the last one, I wanted to inform the commission that the city selection committee has uh, appointed Yvette Brooks to be our regular member and uh, Ms. Donna Lynn from Scotts Valley to be our alternate city member. Uh, as the commission is well aware, uh, the city selection committee has uh, developed a rotation schedule for the four cities so they can have equal representation on LAFCO. Um, we'll discuss this in more detail, but this will be Commissioner Justin Cummings' last meeting as a representative for Scott for Santa Cruz. They'll be rotating out and everyone else is rotating in. So uh, Watsonville and Capitola will be the regular members and Scotts Valley will be our alternate. Uh, Madam Chair, that concludes my update. I'm happy to answer any questions, um, if any. I don't see any questions. Any commissioner, um, anybody from the public have any questions? You see, okay, one of the Cummings panelists from? does. I didn't, I, I'm sorry, my. Um, I see Commissioner Justin Cummings has some, some comments. Okay, I don't even see his hand up. <laughs> yeah, I see it. I just, I just had a quick question just to be able to bring back to uh, San Cruz City Council. When can they expect to have a, a, a sitting member or alternate again on LAFCO? For the, the city of Santa Cruz? Yes. That's a good question. Uh, I, I know I've spoken with the city um, staff not too long ago, ago about that, but I'm thinking in 2024 would be okay. when the city of Santa Cruz uh, comes back as an alternate. Thank you. And Madam Chair, I don't see any other uh, hands raised. Okay, so let's move on to adoption of minutes. Let 
Let's see. We need Do a we motion. have any comments on the minutes? <laughs> I move approval of our uh, minutes from our past meeting. Second. Okay, we have approval. I mean, um, sorry. And a motion by okay. Commissioner Jim Anderson and a second by Justin Cummings. Right, so let's um, do the vote. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Jim Anderson? Aye. Commissioner Roger Anderson? Aye. Commissioner Ryan Coonerty? Aye. Commissioner Justin Cummings? Aye. Commissioner Zach Friend? Aye. Vice Chair Yvette Brooks? Aye. And Madam Chair Rochelle Layden? Aye. This motion passes unanimously. So now we're at um, oral communications. Are there any um, any um, participants, and I guess in general, any attendees want to bring something up that's not on the agenda? Madam Chair, I don't see any uh, hands raised at the moment, and we did not receive any emails from okay. members of the public. So are there any members of the um, of the board that want to bring up anything that's not on the agenda today? Don't see, some, uh, don't see any Joe, hands. Joe, did you want to bring up anything? <laughs> uh, no, I, I think we have everything on the agenda, so I'll, I'll keep my okay. mouth shut for the time being. Okay, great. Let's move on to the public hearing, City of Capitola Service and Sphere Review. Thank you, Madam Chair. The City of Capitola was formed in 1949 and is a small coastal community that encompasses about two square miles. Uh, the last service and sphere review conducted for the city was back in August 2017. This year's service review cycle focused on a more in-depth evaluation of the 73-year-old city. The complete analysis is attached to your agenda packet. For today's presentation, staff will focus on the key findings. Uh, first, the city provides various public services, including but not limited to fire protection. I mean, I'm sorry, police protection, street maintenance, and recreational services to approximately 10,000 residents. LAFCO projects that their population will reach approximately 11,000 by the year 2040. The city is also financially stable, having experienced a surplus in five of the last six fiscal years analyzed by LAFCO. As of June 2021, the city is operating with a net position of approximately 33 million. While the city is doing financially well and with their operations, LAFCO has identified some areas of improvement. One is with their website. It is filled with useful information and overall provides the required documents pursuant to state law. But staff did find some outdated web pages and certain info was difficult to locate. So LAFCO is recommending that the city regularly maintain and update its website going forward, as well as including the service review as additional resource in their website. The other area of improvement is how they advertise their current and future capital improvement projects. The city previously had a detailed five-year CIP plan that covered 2014 to 2019. However, there's no current five-year plan to date. That is why LAFCO is recommending that the city consider adopting a new five-year plan or implement some type of transparent method to inform the residents about current and future capital improvement projects. And finally, uh, we have the city's sphere of influence, which indicates where the city may grow in the future, or in other words, uh, the sphere boundary indicates the city as the most logical provider of public services to areas outside its current jurisdictional boundary. The original sphere boundary was adopted back in 1975, and for the most part, it has remained the same ever since. Approximately 2,200 parcels are within the city sphere, totaling 662 acres, 622 acres. This time around, the staff did something different. We coordinated with the city and NETCOM, which is a 911 database, to see how many police calls occurred in the sphere area during the 2021 calendar year. Over 6,000 calls were responded by the county sheriff department. And they responded 99% of those calls, even though the city police department 
is right next door. So based on the number of calls and the close proximity to the city, it is staff determination that it may be more efficient for the city to provide police services within the sphere boundary following an annexation or annexations. This transfer of responsibility will allow the, the county sheriff's department to focus its resources in other unincorporated areas. And this commission is well aware that staff is not a fan of spheres being in place with no existing plan or at minimum some type of activity. In the last 50 years since the sphere was adopted, the city has completed 15 annexations or reorganizations, with the last one occurring in 1984. That, that's why staff is recommending that the commission reaffirm the city's sphere with the condition that the city develop an annexation plan before the next service review cycle. If the city wants to annex territory in the future, it will be based on the sphere and their established plan. And if no plan is in place, then the commission should consider reducing the sphere to reflect the city's interest or lack thereof in future growth. With that, staff is recommending that the commission approve the draft resolution uh, for the 2022 report with the following conditions that we reaffirm the sphere boundary with the condition that the city develop an annexation plan by May 2027 uh, and direct staff to direct uh, to distribute a copy of the adopter report to the city and any other interested or affected agencies. Madam Chair, that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, so at this point, we, it's a public hearing. So um, are there any members of the public interested in speaking? Please raise your hand if you are. Madam Chair, I don't see any hands raised at the moment. Okay, um, then I'll bring it back to the, the board. Um, are there any members of the board that have any comments or questions? Roger, I thought I'd see your hand. All right, um, I think for the most part, this uh, determination is very well thought out. And I want to thank Mr. Serrano for his work on this. I have just a couple of questions that I would like to get some answers to one way or the other. Um, the first one is on this uh, large unincorporated area, which is in with, within the sphere. Now, Mr. Serrano gives the size of that and gives the number of parcels. But looking at that map, which is on our screen right now, it's clear that most of that area is developed. I'd like to know how many people are in that area. And what are the projections in the future? I don't know how fast it's been growing. Another thing that may or may not be relevant is the fact that apparently there's some history with the annexations in Capitola. Um, in that the 1975 annexation, which I wasn't here for, um, was actually done partly um, in response to the Capitola Mall development. And I don't know whether that still has any uh, relevance or not, but I think it deserves some attention. Um, and then the last comment I have is that in city budgets, I'm always concerned about the cost of pensions. And I don't see projections within the, um, within the report about what's likely to happen in the future. Um, Mr. Strano has done an excellent job of looking at the, um, the past budgets but I, I am interested in knowing what the future will bring. Also, whether or not the issues with the Capitol Mall uh, and the redevelopment of that, uh, whether that will influence any aspects of the report. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Roger. Madam Chair, do you mind if I answer those questions or his no, comments? No, I was, I was just gonna ask you to. Yeah, perfect. So really great comments. And, and, and I'll start with the population projections in the sphere boundary. That gets a little tricky when we're looking at unincorporated areas because that data isn't relatively available. What LAFCO has been doing for the last three years is um, we, we do uh, projections and uh, you know, some estimates just to give a, a broader sense of what's going on, but that's typically for special districts. In this case, uh, staff did look at the population within the sphere boundary. We use uh, ArcGIS, our mapping database to determine the population, but it was using 2010 
data, census block group data, um, and comparing that with the 2020 information for the city of Capitola, it was, it, it was a little bit difficult to compare apples to apples, but that being said, with, with all those disclaimers in mind, there is approximately 10,000 people living in, within the sphere boundary. But again, uh, that is LAFCO staff's estimates in order to, to uh, that's why it wasn't included in this report because I wasn't uh, sure about that true number. So that's why I focused on actual data points, meaning the acres and the, the parcel amount. Uh, that's something that LAFCO will be happy to coordinate with the city if uh, once they begin that annexation plan to determine how many people are living in the sphere uh, boundary. So that's that's a good comment that I'd like to address uh, and, and coordinate with the city on. Next, uh, regarding their, their pension uh, liabilities and, and future uh, projections. For these service reviews, LAFCO staff likes to look at actuarials. So that's why we do a five, six year analysis based on their financial statements. Uh, staff doesn't typically look at projections. We, we defer that to the city um, to, to determine uh, what's their future cost. Uh, we, we do look at their financial statements, but, but to answer your question, Roger Anderson, uh, typically staff does look at just actuarial data that's available. That being said, if the commission wants staff to, to look into developing future projections for cities or special districts as part of this report, I'd be open to that. Uh, and I, I think those were the, your, your main comments, but I'd be happy to answer any, any more that you do have, Commissioner Roger Anderson. I, I guess what you're saying is that the, if everyone in the sphere were annexed, it would approximately double the population of Capitola. Is that correct? If our estimates are correct, in theory, yes. If the city would decide to annex everything within their city, the city um, in their sphere, it, it may double their, their population uh, amount. But again, um, I, I'm not 100% uh, sure of how many people live in the sphere boundary. But yeah, hypothetically, that may be the case. And that may or may not um, encourage or discourage the city of, of annexing in these areas, but we should look into it and we should develop a plan and that way the sphere will reflect what the city wants to do in the future. Thank you. Justin. Chair, um, and thanks for that update. I don't know if you mentioned it, but um, what is the amount of area that's in the, um, with, that's within the boundary, but not in the city limits. Did you did you mention that earlier? Yeah. So there's there's approximately twenty two hundred parcels. Okay. So it's six hundred and twenty two acres. Great. Um, and then I think something that might be good to know is how much of that is undeveloped as well. And I'm thinking about this within the context of the regional housing needs assessment numbers because um, you know. The cities and you know the counties are getting you know allocated certain amounts of housing that needs to be developed and, and being on sitting on the ambag as well i know it came up that you know one of the things that restricts capitola is um you know the amount of developable the developable area within the city limits but if the boundary um of its sphere is you know 622 additional acres that could actually help them uh, to build more housing within that area. And so um, I think it would just be good to know how much is undeveloped. And then also, you know, working with Capitola, um, if they're gonna develop an annexation plan, you know, how that can help with them to meet their regional housing needs assessment goals. You know, if that's something that can be worked out with them, I think that would, that might help. So, and I don't wanna speak on behalf of Capitola, but I'm just, you know, thinking about, you know, what are some of the constraints that I've heard at these meetings um, at AMBAG and, and, you know, what are some possibilities to help facilitate uh, housing and helping them meet their needs? So, thank you. Commissioner Justin Cummings, I think you, you raise a great point. And again, that that really kind of uh, solidifies the reason why staff is encouraging the city to develop an annexation plan to look into that, to see, does this benefit the city uh, with, with the arena numbers and, and LAFCO staff can definitely help to determine what's vacant, undeveloped parcels, which one are developed. We can provide that information to the city 
we can also determine what the assessed value is uh, to, to see if, if the city's interested in annexation, how much uh, uh, of the property tax would they receive? So all that could be analyzed in this annexation plan. And, and again, uh, by allowing them uh, enough time before the next service review cycle, we, we can really get answers to the, to the comments that you and Roger Anderson have, have just uh, raised. You know, one more thing that makes me think of it, I don't know how this fits in, but um, you know, with the arena numbers, I know it's housing development, but I don't know how annexation fits within that as well. Like if if you annex in, you know, housing and there's, for example, affordable housing that's there or there's market rate housing, how that works into the arena numbers. I don't know if that's if it that's not possible, um, you know, if that doesn't help for to count for new housing, but that's a, also a question that might be worth yeah, asking. Yeah, that's definitely a factor we that we can look into. Yeah, thank you. Okay, um, Commissioner Brooks. Thank you, Chair. Justin, it's okay that you speak on behalf of Capitola. Those are some good ideas. Um, so, Joe, you, you, uh, the only thing I'm hesitant about is the, as you know, our staff is limited and I look at such a big undertaking and I've heard you kind of go back and forth about what LAFCO can do and what the city should do in terms of um, creating this uh, five-year plan that we're, we're discussing right now. I'm wondering how much of a role LAFCO will have in supporting the city. And I'm hoping the answer is we do it all <laughs> because we're so limited with staff's time. Um, and so can you tell me a little bit more about that? Um, and I know that our city manager is on the line as well. Sure. Uh, so one quick distinction of uh, LAFCO staff is encouraging the, the city to look, to consider adopting another five-year plan like you, you had you know five years ago. Um, but that's up, up to the city to determine if they want to do that. What LAFCO, what staff is really encouraging is just a little bit more transparency when it comes to current and future capital improvement projects. So that's one thing that the city can just consider. The one thing that, uh, on the other hand, what LAFCO is requesting the city to do regarding their sphere is develop an annexation plan to see whether or not the city is interested in annexing these areas in the sphere boundary. If the answer is, you know what, there's only a, a portion of in the sphere that we want to annex. Everything else, it's, it's yet to be determined. The sphere boundary should reflect that because this is a huge boundary that's been in place since 1975. And if it doesn't reflect the city's interest, then we should modify it. And so to answer your question of how can LAFCO staff help with the annexation plan, I am more than happy to help uh, develop that plan uh, jointly with the city. I understand that uh, your, your staff is limited and there's other priorities. That's why staff is, LAFCO staff is recommending this plan be developed within four years to give the city enough time to develop, to develop a, a plan. But I think it's, it's a necessity to develop a plan for these fears. And this is something that LAFCO staff has been requesting for all the agencies that we've been analyzing these last three years is develop a plan for their spheres. Uh, because if they're in place for another 50 years and nothing happens, then what's the point of spheres? They're just sitting there, they're imaginary lines. But if there's a plan in place, then it, it leads to something. What that something may be will be will be based on what the city wants to do. So uh, long story short, LAFCO staff is more than happy to help uh, develop that plan. Uh, and uh, my, my door is always open. I appreciate that. Thank you, Joe. Are there any more questions? Comments? Motion? Did this go up to public comment yet? Because I'm happy to make a motion, but I yeah, I did. I did do the public comment, but I could give them another chance if you want. <laughs> I'll, I'll go ahead and move the staff recommendation. Yeah. I'll second. We have a motion, a second. Roll call, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Jim Anderson. Aye. Commissioner Roger Anderson. Aye. Commissioner Ryan Coonerty. Aye. Commissioner Justin Cummings. I think you motioned, so I, I didn't hear you say aye. Oh, aye. Yes. There we go. 
Uh, Commissioner Zach Friend. Aye. Vice Chair Yvette Brooks. Aye. And Madam Chair Rochelle Lather. Aye. This motion passes unanimously. So now we move on. Because I like short meetings. Let's see. Other business. Continuation of the remote meetings. Joe, you're presenting this? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I'll, I'll keep this brief. Uh, one of the uh, items that the commission requested last month was for staff to look at potentially uh, implementing a hybrid approach that would allow the commissioners and the members of the public to have an option to um, access future LAFCO meetings either virtually or in person. Uh, staff met with county representatives uh, to look at the Board of Supervisors Chambers and see if we could also utilize their hybrid equipment. Uh, the short answer is yes, staff can implement this hybrid approach. Uh, it will not cost uh, any additional fees for LAFCO to utilize. Uh, there, there'll be some type of, you know, training, but the, for the most part, uh, this is very doable. That being said, it would require additional technical responsibilities on staff uh, to, to conduct a hybrid model going forward. Uh, and, you know, Vice Chair Yvette Brooks talked about limited staff. You're looking at 100% of LAFCO staff. So uh, I will, I'll be juggling a lot of balls when it comes to uh, this hybrid approach. But if the commission wants uh, to implement, I, I think it's the right approach. I think the silver lining of this whole pandemic is these virtual meetings for public agencies have allowed residents to or members of the public to to participate. Uh, some special districts have seen an uh, an uptick in members uh, joining their meetings than, than before because it's it's just easier. It's more accessible, and I think going forward, uh, LAFCA should implement a hybrid model even after this uh, state of emergency is lifted so that the commission and the public can have an option. And I think with the equipment available in the County uh, Board of Supervisors Chambers, we can do that. That being said, I did do a quick survey to the commissioners and the majority of you uh, prefer utilizing uh, the remote uh, option. Uh, only two were, were really willing to, to go in person. So if we do decide to do a hybrid model, uh, I'd like for one of two things to happen. One, the, at least half of the commissioners want to be in person and the other half are virtual or, or something along those lines, or the state of emergency uh, is, is lifted. And in that case, we do implement the hybrid approach. But uh, I think if, if the majority of the commissioners still want to be virtually, it's easier on staff to just conduct it 100. But once we reach that point where you know we have uh, half commissioners willing to be in person, half uh, virtual, then I think that would be the more appropriate time to implement the hybrid model. But uh, in summary, this hybrid approach, it, it, I think it's it's the future, and, and staff has the capabilities of doing so. Uh, but it'll be up to the commissioner to determine when that will occur. So that being said, staff is recommending to continue. The remote meetings for the time being uh, for the next 30 days and then we'll discuss this again in june uh, madam chair that concludes my presentation i'd be happy to answer any questions once you open and close public comments okay um, um any members of the public want to address this item seeing madam. no hands up i will close the public comment period and move to um Commissioners, any commissioners want to discuss this? I move staff's recommendation. Thank you. I'll, beat I'll, to it. I'll second that. I'll second that. Okay. So we have a motion from Vice Chair Brooks and second by Commissioner Jim Anderson. Correct. Oh, wait, Justin has his hand up. Yes. Yeah, this is my last meeting, so I'm not going <laughs> to way too heavily in on this but you know i will say that um there has been some benefit of having uh, meetings in person um, especially because you know having that human connection of you know when people come and comment um you know being able to see the people you know and being able to kind of have that 
interact and engaging their emotions on different topics, I think is important, especially because, you know, there will be points in time when there will be controversial issues that will come to LAFCO. And, um, you know, just hearing someone's voice and knowing that people get distracted with their computers, I think there is some merit to having the um, in-person or hybrid meetings. And so um, just think it's worth putting that out there. And, and should there be an effort to go towards some kind of permanent hybrid approach, I think it would be good to have you know, a, a gender report put together with costs and um, and what have you, so that members of the public can have an opportunity to weigh in on that. Um, you know, continuation of these meetings, I think, is something we've been doing just out of necessity because of state law and the pandemic. But if we're gonna, if that's gonna be something that will be a permanent uh, shift, then I think you know, being able to put that to the public and have folks weigh in would be beneficial. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Justin. So we do have a motion and a second. If there's no more comments, let's um, please take a roll call. You got it. Commissioner Jim Anderson. Aye. Commissioner Roger Anderson. Aye. Commissioner Ryan Coonerty. Aye. Commissioner Justin Cummings. Aye. Commissioner Zach Friend. Aye. Vice Chair Yvette Brooks. Aye. Madam Chair Rochelle Lather. Aye. This motion passes unanimously. Okay, so next is the comprehensive quarterly report. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll keep this brief, or at least try to. Uh, on a quarterly basis, staff provides the commission a, an update on everything that staff has been working on during the, the third quarter, in this case, from January to March. Uh, just as a Quick overview, we currently have five active applications. Uh, three of them are pretty standard annexations. We have one, which is a single parcel annexation to the city of Scotts Valley. We have another two parcel annexation to the South Sequoia Sanitary District. And we have uh, one recent that is a two parcel annexation to the San Lorenzo Valley Water District. Uh, on the other hand, we have two other applications that are, are much larger. We have a reorganization involving the Pajaro Valley Fire Protection District. That one's going to be a, a year-long process. We also have the Brant to 40 Fire Protection District reorganization. That's going to be another year-long process. Um, so, uh, and I anticipate receiving a, a couple more uh, applications. Uh, one may be from the Scotts Valley Water District to annex all the parcels within their sphere boundary. So going back to uh, Vice Chair Brooks, uh, having these service reviews and really asking um, the public agencies to look at their spheres. Scotts Valley Water District is a great example of them saying, you know what, we should uh, move forward with the annexation. So they're uh, anticipating, um, they're gonna be considering adopting a resolution of initiation at their next board meeting uh, to uh, start the annexation process for all the spheres and their, uh, for all the parcels and their, their sphere boundary. We may also get a application to um, dissolve the reclamation uh, district the, involving College Park or College Lake. Uh, that's in the works. So LAFCO staff has been working on a number of active applications as well as upcoming applications. Uh, on top of that, uh, we did terminate the Roaring Cap annexation to the San Lorenzo Valley Water District. Uh, this has been in the books for three years. Uh, staff gave uh, the applicant more than enough time to provide the necessary documents. Um, we, we've been coordinating with them and the, they have other priorities. So they were happy to terminate the application knowing that in the future they may resubmit. And we also completed the Opal Cliffs Recreation District dissolution uh, not too long ago. So that's a quick overview of applications. When it comes to service reviews, uh, the commission just adopted the service review for the city of Capitola, so one down, 40 to go. Uh, we'll be reviewing the six water parts, uh, six water districts in August and the 34 road-related CSAs in October. When it comes to our budget, uh, staff is anticipating a surplus at the end of this fiscal year. Uh, at the end of the third quarter, we uh, incurred uh, 42% of our total expenses. Staff is uh, projecting that we'll end uh, with around 65, maybe 70% of ex total expenses incurred. So we'll, we'll have a, a surplus at the end, which will be important because 
that surplus amount will be transferred over to our upcoming final budget for fiscal year 22 23 uh, which a portion of the budget will be balanced by our reserves and finally um, during this three month uh, period staff participated in over 30 in-person or virtual meetings. So your staff has been very busy with a number of projects regarding spheres and applications and, and just other uh, LAFCA related assignments and tasks. Uh, staff is uh, really working closely with the Branson 40 Fire Protection District. We are scheduled to have a meeting with their newly created resident advisory committee this Saturday. So your staff works 24 seven, seven days a week no breaks, all laugh go all the time. But uh, Chair, that being said, that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions once you open and close public comments. Uh, this is an informational item, so no action is required. So um, I will open it up to the public. Are there any attendees that are interested in commenting on this item? There's no hands up, so I will move it to um, back to the commission. Are there any commissioners interested in asking any questions or have any comments? It doesn't look like it, so let's move on to special business since there's no action required. Thank you, Madam Chair. As we mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, uh, this will be Commissioner Justin Cummings' last LAFCO meeting. Uh, his term is ending uh, this month. Uh, so the new city representatives will start their, their, they'll have their first meetings in June, but this will be the last meeting for uh, Commissioner Justin Cummings uh, as a representative of the city of Santa Cruz. Uh, so his term was four years. And within those four years, he was very instrumental in completing a lot of major projects. And so LAFCO staff wanted to show appreciation by presenting a draft resolution. And I think that the commission will join me in, in thanking uh, Commissioner Justin Cummings as, as being the chair for LAFCO, uh, for being a champion of these uh, boundary changes that we've done in the last three years. Uh, so he, he it was a great component of this commission. And you never know, he may join us wearing a different political hat time will tell, uh, but he'll still be a city council member until December 2022. Uh, but with that, Chair, uh, I, I want to thank, personally thank Justin Cummings for, for his leadership, and I am recommending that staff, that the commission adopt the draft resolution uh, showing appreciation to Commissioner Justin Cummings. With that, uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions once you open and close public comments. So are there any members of the public that would like to address this item? I don't see any. So um, are there any board, I'm sorry, commissioners that would like to address this item? Roger. Yeah, I just wanted to give my thanks to Justin for several things that where I had good interaction with him on the commission. The first was on the personnel committee uh, for uh, where we had several meetings talking with Mr. Serrano about um, personnel needs as well as his performance and the types of things that he's trying to do for us. And I really like Justin's comments on this and thought they were very astute and thoughtful. So it's very, very nice to have known him in that. I also like his preparation that he's made for these meetings. He generally has something to say at every meeting about most of the topics. And, and I just want to appreciate that um, in terms of, I hope he can con continues this sort of uh, work in the future. So Joe, eventually are you gonna um, read the resolution out loud for the record? If you Justin, like. Justin looked like he had a comment, or did you put your hand back down? I, I can just make comments if we're um, going to be moving on, but yeah, I don't know if it, the resolution is going to be read. Okay. Madam Chair, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll, I'll read it. Uh, 
I have it in my in, in front of me. So here we go. <clears throat> Whereas Commissioner Justin Cummings has served as a regular city member of the local agency formation commission of Santa Cruz County for the last four years, starting from May 1st, 2020, 2019 to May 4th, 2022. And whereas Justin Cummings contributed to LAFCA deliberations with his knowledge of land use issues, provisions of public services, and forward thinking best practices. Whereas Justin Cummings serves as LAFCO's chair during the 2021 calendar year and was instrumental in championing 16 successful proposals and service reviews, including but not limited to the dissolution of county service area 60, the completion of two extraterritorial service agreements involving the cities of Scotts Valley and Watsonville, and the completion of the countywide fire protection service as for review. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Local Agency Formation Commission of Santa Cruz County that this commission hereby expresses its appreciation to Justin Cummings for his work on behalf of LAFCO and for the people of Santa Cruz County. Passed and resolved by the Local Agency Formation Commission of Santa Cruz County this 4th of May 2022. May the 4th be with you, Justin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we need a motion and a um, second, if there's no more comments. I'll, I'll move, move the motion. I'll second it. Not sure who was the first in motion. Was it Brian? I know. Or Brian? Ro Ryan might have beat Roger. It was close. Go ahead, Ryan. All right. <laughs> sure. And I just want to thank Justin for his work uh, uh, on this commission and as a partner at the city. Perfect. So we got a motion by Commissioner Ryan Crudity and a second by Jim Anderson. So roll call, please. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Jim Anderson. Aye. Commissioner Roger Anderson. Aye. Commissioner Ryan Crudity. Aye. Commissioner Justin Cummings. Aye. Commissioner Zach Friend. Aye. Vice Chair Yvette Brooks. Aye. Madam Chair Rochelle Leo. Aye. This motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Justin, for all your work. He's already logged off. Oh, there you are. Oh, yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> you bounced. <laughs> no, I just want to um, uh, express my appreciation for this uh, resolution and also just for all the people who have served on LAFCO over the past few years. It's been great to learn more. I'm, you know, getting on city councils, you never know what you're going to end up with in terms of what um, commissions you're going to be on. And I never thought I'd be so enthusiastic and interested in land use, but uh, this commission is extremely important. And, um, you know, I hope that should things work out with the, uh, the upcoming election that I'll be able to continue serving on LAFCO. And, um, and, but who knows, I might, I might serve in a different capacity as well, but I really just want to express my appreciation for everyone on this board and the staff. Um, this is a really great commission and it's been great working with everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, let's move on to written correspondence, correct? Yeah. Correct, and Madam Chair, we did not receive any written correspondence uh, this month. Okay, so let's move to press articles. And this is just a periodic uh, update. Staff identifies um, articles that may be of interest to the commission. Uh, but staff doesn't have any uh, articles to, to point out, and I don't have a presentation, so I'd be happy to answer any questions if the commissioners or members of the public have any. Um, Mr. Serrano, I, I had one question. What is going on in Montecito? Re, uh, refresh my memory. Which article is that? Those are the ones about a combination of, well, two things. Oh, yes. Combining the water and the sanitation district yes and also some talk about actually incorporating montecito as a separate um city i mean yeah, the reason i'm interested in is that montecito of course is a coastal community and i rather wealthy one as i recall and i i just couldn't really tell from the articles exactly what is happening i mean i, I came away with kind of a, a disappointed attitude but i wanted to know if there's more that you might know of from Calafco. Yeah, I haven't heard anything from Calafco and, and I've reached out to the EO uh, 
before that Montesino laugh go and I'm waiting to hear back from them. Uh, but it's an interesting situation. And that's why I wanted to bring it to the commission's attention of there's, you know, at, at the high level, there's, there's a water and sewer district that are looking to consolidate, which will be interesting to see how that will play out. But internally, there's some um, interesting uh, characters uh, on the boards and some are in favor of this consolidation, some are not, and there, there's accusations of uh, violations of the Brown Act. And so it's, it's an interesting situation and, and I don't have more information than what the articles provide. Uh, but when I do hear back from the EO, uh, I'll definitely share with the commission uh, on what's transparent. But I, I think what they're attempting to do is, is just find an efficient way to provide services to the residents. It's just that in a lot of cases, you have certain personalities uh, on the board or on staff that, that make it difficult to, to do these type of uh, boundary changes. And so this one's actually playing out uh, in the public. So you, you, you have articles being written about it, but I don't have any uh, insider scoop of what's going on other than what the articles provide. Okay, anybody else have anything to bring up? Then let's move on to commissioner's business. This is an opportunity for commissioners to comment briefly on issues that aren't on the agenda. I don't see anybody um, waving their hands. So I will move on to adjournment. So the next regular meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, June 1st, and Yvette will be the um, chair at that time because I'll be on vacation. Uh, spoiler. Just drop yeah. that in on you, Yvette. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks. I feel, again, bamboozled here. This is <laughs> seeming to be a trend. <laughs> I, I move the adjournment and look forward to the meeting with Yvette next next month. Mm -hmm. I'll keep a it by Chair Brooks. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for everything, Justin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, take care, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye. I don't know if I can click out before you click me out. <laughs> there it is. All right. All right. Thanks again. Take care, everyone.